In this video, I'll look in detail at how to use Notical to take control of Logic's mix automation features. In doing this, you can put almost every single channel strip parameter, including most synth parameters, all plugin parameters, and all channel controls, directly under Notical's generative influence. It's very powerful stuff. In many instances, you'll be able to get along just fine, of course, simply by using MIDI controllers to manage the major channel strip assignments and to address any specific MIDI control assignments you might have made in your soft synths. But eventually, this is limiting, and you'll need to use this technique I'll show here to extend your control, even if all you want to do is something as basic as vary the send level to an auxiliary channel in Logic's mixer. Some preliminary tips first. When using mix automation of any kind, I found it best to completely disable Logic's reception of MIDI controller numbers 7 and 10, channel volume and pan. You can of course stop Notical from sending these controllers in the first place, but you need to remember to do that on every new voice line you create. I've found I often forget to do that when I'm concentrating on building a new piece, so simply to protect me from myself, I've set up a series of filters in Logic's environment to stop any stray controllers from getting through and messing up my mix. To do the same, you open up an environment window, which is Command and Date, and go to the Clicks and Ports layer. Select New, Transformer, and cable this between your MIDI inputs and the sequencer input. Double click to open the Transformer object, Set it to identify MIDI controller number 7 on all channels and then set the transformer type to filter the defined event. Do the same to filter pan messages and if you like, stop program changes while you're at it. And there you have a safety net in place. Now I've set Logic up here with a simple FM synth plugin on the first instrument channel. What I want to do is use Notical to vary the FM modulator wave quality on this synth. This parameter can't easily be automated by MIDI, but it will respond to fader messages. It probably won't sound very musical when it is modulated to extremes, but at least you'll hear the modulation happen. Before we move on, it's worth just doing a quick recap about Logic's mix automation system. Mix automation relies on Logic's internal fader messaging system, which is similar to MIDI in that it uses controller and channel numbers, but it's vastly expanded and works at a much higher resolution. In order for Notical to use this system, we need some way of converting MIDI controller messages from Notical into fader messages in Logic, and we make that happen back in the environment. What I'm going to do is open two environment windows here, in the first one, I'm going to create a new environment layer like so, and we'll use this new layer to hold our controller translation system. Now it's essential that you do do this in a new layer, because there seems to be a quirk in Logic 8 that means if you try to do this on, say, the click and port layer, it somehow confuses your MIDI routing in general. It's also a neater way to work in any case. On this new layer, I'll now add a channel splitter and then take the cable from my click and port layer, after my safety net filters obviously, and bring it down to the splitter. I'll now add a monitor object, which will act as a useful junction box for us a bit later on, and label it channel 1, again because it keeps things tidy. I'll keep it at this for the demo, but if you're setting up a proper template for yourself, you'd probably want to add one of these for each MIDI channel, which again is why it's good to give it a meaningful name. Now we come to the heart of the matter. We need to install something here that will transform MIDI to fader messages, and to do that we use a simple fader object, which is actually a transformer in disguise. We start by adding just a new basic fader from the vast list on offer, and cable it from port 1 of the channel splitter, and connect it to our first monitor object. We can then take a cable from that monitor object through to the instrument channel on the audio layer that we want to control. Once you've done that, everything else you cable into this monitor will feed straight out into that channel strip, 
hence the use of monitors as junction boxes to stop us having to lay a hop and keep things clear and tidy. For this demo, I've already set up Nautical to transmit MIDI controller 20 on MIDI channel 1, cycling through a steady LFO pattern. So now, if we just set up the input side of this fader to listen out for that, the job is half done. To finish the job, we now need to set up the correct fader messages and the fader channel settings for the output side. And that requires detective work because it's not documented. To get that information, I need to go back to the Arrange page and I need to use the key command A to display the automation data. By default, it displays channel volume, but we can search through the available parameters here until we find the one we want. The sheer number of parameters on offer here for automation should give you some idea of how deep you can go with this technique. But the one we want today is this one here. Now that's on show, you simply draw a single point of automation data on the track like this. Now, using the key command Control Command E, we open up what is a special instance of the event editor which displays automation information and we can see the information we just wrote. Note that you can only get to this instance of the event editor by using that key command. There isn't a menu option for this. And there's the information we need. We can see that the FM modulator wave responds to fader number 20 on fader channel number 2. And again, I stress that's not a MIDI channel, that's a fader channel. Armed with that information, we go back to our environment layer and complete the specifications for our fader output. And that should be it. If I now start everything playing, we should be able to see and hear the results of our labours. probably not art, but it does at least show you the basic principles of converting incoming MIDI controllers into Logic's internal fader messages. If you wanted to modulate multiple parameters on this channel, you just repeat that process. You add a new fader, cabled in series with the current one, set it to listen for your MIDI controller of choice, you then sniff out the fader message identity and channel of the destination parameter you want to modulate, and set the fader object to match. And while that's a bit fiddly, the technique does open up almost every single one of Logic's internal parameters for generative control from Nautical, and as I said at the outset, that is seriously powerful stuff. <laughs>